M0FXB welcome. So we're going to do the modification and install this board. I just want you to know right from the start that there is one capacitor that you should not remove if you want to use the existing antenna. And I have removed it and then realised later that I didn't need to. It's, I'll just show you where it goes. It goes just here. See there where there's a capacitor missing. Okay. Just there. My big finger's in the way. Really important that you leave that in place. And then the other thing is at the end of this process, you do do a, a factory reset by putting the radio into service mode. And the way you do it in service mode is just turn it off, like so. And then hold this button here. See if you can see that a bit clearer. This one here and the PTT. Turn it on and it says release keys, let go. And now when you go into menu, it'll give you extra menus. Go up to C60 and it says reset VFO. And then just press menu, menu again, then short and then reset. And, that, and that's it. And to go into the sort of HF mode, you just hold down the zero. Watch the rest of the video. M0 FXP Hamtech, welcome back to the channel. So I've got one of these boards for converting your Quashang to use HF and have a lot better audio quality and it's louder as well. So it's quite a flexible thing as you can see here. We're going to follow the instructions by OMET. The hardest bit are the link wires that you add at the end. I think that actually removing the parts and adding the board doesn't look too bad. So there's my Quashang, and I've, I've actually dug out a very early one that I bought when they were called Warui. And when I got this, hardly anyone had, had ever heard of, of these radios. But here it is, and obviously they're, they're like world famous now. So you just pull the knob off, the orange knob, undo the antenna. Take off the battery. Now you do want to get yourself. I've got alcohol wipes here, but you can buy, you know, other methods. I've got some snips. I've got a solder sucker, some solder and solder. And I've got this solder station, which is actually a cheap one, but it does the job and uh, it's better than what I had before. So at the bottom, push that button. The battery comes off. I'm not going to do that for a while. And it does actually just pull out from the base. Uh, some of them have, I've not seen one yet, but you know the gold screws that hold down the two knobs? They, uh, they are underneath, so you should be able to just literally just pull it out by just popping in, a, in that gap here. And it should just pull out and pull once you've taken off the knobs. Uh, just watch out, because as you do that, the side rubbers come out. Just don't lose them, really. So, so there you are, Look, I'm just starting to lift it out now. Pull it out and then ease it towards you. Of course, you do anything like this, you're gonna risk breaking it. But these things, you know, they're not expensive. People moan about these items sometimes. Uh, and I always think, why? You know, people waste so much more money on Coca-Cola and a McDonald's. These, at least when you get it, it lasts forever. And it won't give you diabetes too and a heart attack. Right. Oh, the rubber fell out. There you are. It only goes back on one way, but that's the one. Don't lose that. So I'm going to turn it over. There's a speaker there, of course, and just a, a rubber pad. But we'll desolder. And just remember that the speaker wire, when it was this way around, uh, was red on the right-hand side. For cleaning my soldering iron, I just have a sponge in water. That's all I use. And it's so important to keep it clean. And I'm, I'm not good at soldering. But I, I, I managed to get through and have some success with most of what I do. So, but it's never that good. Just pull that wire off. So I'm just, it's a bit awkward when you do it, when you're filming. 
Okay, so you saw that it popped off nice and easy. So the modification board sits like this, okay? And so these, if you look underneath this section here, it's basically re replacing this chip. So we need to take this chip off, but without damaging anything around it. So it is, I know it's, it's not easy. Um, and it's down to your soldering skills. Once it's off, then you've got to re-solder here and here, basically, and then add some jumpers. So let's take that off. So I'm not going to show you every single bit of soldering that I do, but, um, you know, I just, as I try, as I heat things, um, just seeing just a little tester there. I, you know, I'm tempted to heat it up with a heat gun, but then I'm worried it'll blow all the other components off around it. So I probably won't do that. I've done it before, I ended up snipping them all, but then you risk, when you snip, you risk ripping the board. So it's up to you. So I, I just couldn't get them off with just solder. So I've ended up snipping them off with my snip. Literally just snipping the prongs, that's what I've ended up doing, and then I'll clean it up afterward. It's messy, but it worked. Look, there's eggs coming off, and there's the other side there. Got hold of it with these prongs, tweezers, and I'm just doing the last bit carefully. And lifting it off and it flies off and then yeah we got some cleaning up to do here but it worked so we'll redo put some flux there and redo all the little pads make sure they're not shorting out as you can see I could do with a finer soldering iron but we'll get there Okay, so the next section is we need to remove these two components here and this one here. So one, two, three components. This one and these two. And then, yeah, we're going to clean it all up before we put it back together. So in the end, I just snip those three components off with my snips. So next we use some tape just to stick it in place, ready for soldering. Okay, it's a bit of a mess, but I have tested that there is continuity between the joints with my little meter here. And I'm just sort of going one at a time and just, just checking that there is continuity it's quite hard to do from a distance but that's what i'm doing to make sure that there is you know a, a continuity so the two jumper wires are installed they go from the second one down here you've got one two yeah then to the bottom of this sort of larger looking which is not actually large but the bottom one then it goes from this little bit the shiny bit that was on here on the board to the left of the tiny little capacitor that is just underneath there. You saw that in an earlier one, just see if I can get in a bit closer. But you can see it's to the, to the left of it a bit. It's black and silver. And that's it. Right, well I'm gonna put it back together. Remember the, the speaker is red there, black to the left. There you go, put that in. And we've got to remember not to lose that side bit. And we just fold it over, pop it in, and then can you see how this only actually goes on one way round? It has to sort of be held in place. And then you're going to push it, just push it through 
there. Clip it back into place. Now there isn't much to do. I will just turn it on for fun, but then we've got to load the, the firmware. I mean, we removed the radio chip by doing that, didn't we? So I don't know what's going to work now. I never thought I'd be doing this to my Rui when I bought it all those years ago. I actually bought it because I liked, I just liked the design. I just thought, oh, that's a neat design with its, you know, quite this design, which was back. Oh, I forgot to put the thing on. <laughs> I'll do that. In, I'll do that now. Looks, hey, funky. Okay, keypad back on. The button literally just pushes on. It only goes on one way. You can't really get that one wrong. And for the people that just don't like the orange, just, you know, I would just... Cool. It's working. Let's see if it even receives two meters a sec. Well, I can hear Hubnet coming through there straight away. So that's Five, good. Six. Um, have we got the right tone on? Not sure okay. about that. Oh, yeah, I just opened Hubnet. Let's give a call through. M0FXB, anyone receive my audio? Mike Zero, Fox X Ray Bravo. Zero, Peter, yeah, picking up your audio. Absolutely fine, mate. A 2E0 PSV. Oh, thanks for that, because I just added this sort of HF board to one of my UVK5s. Turned it on. I haven't loaded the new firmware that runs the HF side. I just wondered if the if the UHF works. I'm on my all-star node. It's Andreas, Western Supermare. Well, there you are. So the worst case scenario... <laughs> Well, that's nice to say that. So I, I'm just using the the, the default uh, firmware, at, you know, as it came years ago. Oh, thanks very much. I think there was a double, slight double, but oh, thank you. I, I'm just, you know, me just tinkering. And I thought, well, that board, I've got to give it a go. Because I did the first version HF board, which was okay, but very quiet. The audio was very quiet. And so this is part two version, and it's actually easier to solder. Although it did it, it did do my head in, but you'll see you'll see the video shortly of, of me doing it. And um, yeah, back to you. Then round to the other station. So anyway, that's good news. It works. You know, yeah, no problem. I haven't to, lost uh, my radio. Anyway, so uh, yeah, over to the other station. And cheers, gentlemen. Cheers. Okay, so I as you've seen, I've been testing, and it. it's been working great on VHF UHF. Let's get it into firmware mode, turn it off, hold down the PTT and turn it on. You've got the bright light on and then we'll plug in the, the twin pin cable here. You need to decide which firmware loader you're going to use. I'm just using the standard Quashon 1 at the moment, but I actually recommend the IJV one because it, um, it will do your, it will back up your, you know, your radio. So we we'll go to the GitHub link that's provided by KD8CEC and 100% check out all the firmware that this uh, uh, that that he makes. It's just excellent. And there's a lot more to his work than uh, than this modification. We got to really be grateful for him. And so it's pointing us towards the 041 HF pack bin. So click the GitHub link that he provides. It takes you here, and then you've got the 041 CC. So click that. It downloads the bin to your download folder. Just here, look, there's the bin there. Packed bin, CEC41. Okay, then we'll go open up our firmware loader program, which just got the Quashung one here. And um, establish our COM port. So we just go right click on the Windows squares, like so. Device manager. And the, the Bofun cable is plugged into my PC and the radio, and it's COM21. So then we choose COM21 and hit connect. And then these three dots here, we're going to choose the 41 bin and click update. We'll let that go in. And so you can still use the radio in the normal way, or if you want, you can choose to to use it you know with the HF and it's funny how this is an old Warui that I got such a long time ago that seems to be going in well and it says updated correctly 
So let's uh, get over to the radio. So as we know, it's working fine as a, as a normal radio. There's uh, my repeater on the B band. And if we go to the A band, my all-star node has been working great. So it's working fine anyway. So I haven't, like I said earlier, I haven't lost anything. And that's just on my wire, my HF wire, which is now connected, as you can see. So now to get into HF, you have to spend the zero, press the zero button. The problem with the previous mod, although I did enjoy it and the radio still works fine as it is, and, and the board is inexpensive, you couldn't really hear anything. It was too quiet. Um, so let's just give this a go. We're going to hold down zero and see what we can hear. Not a lot at the moment. Long press of the F button. See, it says AM here. So at the moment, it's very quiet. Now I'm wondering if my antenna is even connected. Do I have to connect the middle, you know, do I have to carry on with the mod and do the middle antenna? But otherwise, we'll give me more time with this and we'll come back with more videos. To me, it's like it's not even got an antenna connected. So I feel like um, maybe when you use the VHF antenna, you do need, you know, socket. You need to do something. So I will suss that one out. Bye for now, 7-3.